Hi, this is Javier Encinas, and today we're going to design from scratch a concrete bearing wall using as deep concrete. This is the statement of the problem. We have a tilt top concrete wall in a warehouse building. Uh, it's supporting uh, roof members uh, that transfer the load eccentrically to, to the wall. And also the wall is exposed to, uh, to a wind pressure. Uh, the loads are two kips every four feet, 48 inches. Uh, light load, two kips also every 48 inches. And the wind pressure is 20 PSF. Let's get started. When you open as deep concrete and create a calculation for a, for a bearing wall, this is the typical form that shows up. The left portion of the screen is dedicated to the input the right portion is dedicated to the output. The information is centered in the different tabs. In the geometry tab, we can define the wall thickness and the reinforcement and the uh, wall height and slenderness information. In this case, according to, to the statement of the problem, the wall is 18 feet high with two feet of parpet. Let's input that first. It's 18 feet here two feet of parapet is already there. So we have a short parapet. The materials, uh, concrete uh, 4 KSI and uh, steel 60 KSI. We leave it the way it is. The loads, let's see the statement of the problem. We have dead two kips every 48 inches and live two kips every 48 inches. Let's input that. So we have two kips every 48 inches, which is this spacing, you know, the spacing between concentrated loads. Also the eccentricity is six inches, is eccentric. Live load, we don't have any live load, but we have roof live load. Also two kips every 48 inches. And that load is six inches eccentric with respect to the center line of, of, the, of the concrete wall. We don't have any snow, but we do have uh, wind. Wind is 20 PSF and 20 PSF for the, for the wall and for the parapet. No concentrated loads. And uh, basically that's the information on the, on, on the loads. Okay, so we have uh, this thickness as a default, 6.5 one uh, uh, layer of uh, rebars at the center of the of the wall four at 12 and four at 12 vertical and horizontal with this uh, default information we can see at a glance that everything is passing so we know now that with this default design everything is passing and everything is correct In the contents tab, we can see uh, the same information with more more detail. For example, here we can see the amplified factor loads. The amplification is performed according to the loads. If we click on the show parameters, we can see how the moments are amplified. Okay, for the different load combinations, we are getting a delta that multiplied by the maximum moment M2 give us the amplified moment MC. So these are the amplified moments according to the, uh, to the uh, ACI 318 uh, methodology for a uh, magnification uh, factor method. So using those amplified moments, we can check the wall strength for every single load combination so we have these are the amplified moments that we already found here we are calculating the capacity of the wall phi pn and phi mn the shear i mean axial load and moment 
design the design actual and the design moment capacity of, of the wall and the ratio so we we can see that everything is passing so uh, the design is, uh, is is okay it's acceptable graphically the program generates the interaction diagram the nominal pm and mn the nominal and also the design with the fee affecting uh, the nominal uh, values these points over there represent the loads also the program generates this blob view of this lower portion of the interaction diagram in, in a larger scale so we can see here the loads uh, better basically in this kind of design the uh, bearing walls the actual capacity is much larger than the bending capacity so the walls you know fail in bending rather than in actual meaning that the loads are grouped at the bottom of the interaction diagram so it's a it's a better view we uh, blow up this this uh, uh, lower portion of the interaction diagram in a larger scale also uh, we can uh, just uh, ignore these nominal uh, values and just concentrate our you know focus our attention to uh, to the design value so let's uh, un uncheck this box and this is uh, the diagram of the uh, uh, design values so basically we are looking at this curve over, over there this diagram here on a larger scale is this little over here over here so we can see that all the loads are inside the usable area in their in interaction diagram meaning that uh, the design is is okay the program generates the interaction diagram by defining these uh, eight points pure compression and usable actual so basically we are defining this point pure actual and uh, here uh, usable here is zero uh, stress in the steel half of the uh, yield stress in the steel here full stress in the steel so it's a uh, balanced condition and so on pure pure bending and uh, pure tension so the program generates these uh, particular values and in order to generate this diagram the program generates a, lo a lot more more points in between so that the curve is smooth and you can see the, the variation of, of the interaction diagram. If we click on the detail tab, we can see in more detail the same calculations, so all the properties of the wall. Here, more detail of the amplified uh, procedure. The controlling load combination is here. We can see uh, exposed formulas and reference to the ACI code. Here is the wall strength. Basically, the design is, is, is acceptable the way it is. We can probably uh, uh, optimize a little bit more the design. For example, instead of six and a half inches, we can probably try six inches, and, it, and it's still okay. Well, here is not okay. Uh, so the amplified factor loads are, are, are not okay. Basically, let's go back to the loads. These are failing because, according to the ACI, the delta factor cannot be greater than 1.4. We are in the borderline because the delta is here 1.4, so it's, it's, it's failing, uh, slightly failing, it's in the borderline. Probably the design is, is acceptable, but uh, it's better if uh, we avoid that, so probably 6.5 would be better. Um, so basically the, the interaction diagram shows graphically what we showed here in, in, in with numbers in the wall strength basically the program is comparing the uh, magnified loads against the wall capacity graphically is comparing the load here the moment here th this distance versus 
this point over there, which is the capacity in bending at the same level of axial load. And the ratios are, are okay. So maximum ratio here is 58 is the maximum ratio, which is okay. Probably we, we can uh, uh, optimize a little bit more. Maybe probably instead of number four at 12, maybe four at 18, probably. And we are still okay. So the maximum ratio is 0.79. Graphically, yeah, the loads are closer to the to the limit to the to the wall capacity, but it's still it's still okay. So four at 18, maybe if we increase this more, probably that will fail already. Let's let's see. It's still okay, but uh, 097 percent. 97% of the capacity is probably too much. So I would use number four at 12 for this wall with a maximum ratio 0 0.58 and would be okay. Graphically, it would look like that, which is excellent, it's perfect, okay? Here we can define the load combinations as a seven, either 10 or 0 0.5. In this case, we are using 0 0.5 and defining the, the the wind pressure accordingly to the to this code. So uh, either way, we can we can we can change to uh, to a 710 if we want. Okay, so we define the load combinations over there. The software generates a report that you can uh, preview here. We have a condensed report similar to the condensed tab and the detail report similar to the detail tab. Let's see the condensed report. The software generates the report automatically. It's a preformatted document with all the information uh, just, just there. The second page with all the graphics included. Let's see the uh, detail report as well. You can see all the information is, is there available with all the formulas and step-by-step -step calculations similar to hand calculations with the exposed formulas reference to the code, wall strength and all the images as well. So this is handy, this is very nice for, uh, for checking and uh, for approval. This is a good way to share the information with uh, your team members. So with this uh, example, we show that uh, how easy it is to design a uh, bearing wall similar to a tilt top wall uh, uh, using as deep concrete. The design was uh, completed in a, just in a few minutes, and we can also optimize the design as, as much as we, as we want and as, as we prefer. So thank you for your attention, and uh, see you in the next video.